They call it their Lenovo Slim 7 Pro X. In this video, we're gonna talk about the performance, the build quality, the usability, the webcam, and all the things I didn't get to cover in the unboxing. So let's dive right in now. First and foremost, this is, in my opinion, Lenovo's like mid-tier premium on-the-go creator laptop. It's gonna be great for graphic designers, photographers, digital artists, 4K video editors, and 6K video previewers. Now, what I mean by that is like, say you're on location, and you want to preview your 6K footage, this laptop would have what it takes. When we get into the benchmarks, I'll show you why I don't think it's the premier like 6K editing laptop, but from a recent poll that I took on my channel, most of you guys are editing 1080p and 6K, but comment below, tell me right now what size of footage you are editing what size, what resolution of footage you are editing. Now jumping into it, this is a nice thin and light chassis. It's not like a micro thin chassis, something like the Samsung Galaxy Book 3 Pro 360, but it is nice, thin and light. As far as the chassis flex is concerned, we don't see any chassis flex, so the build quality is great. Looking at the bottom cover, the bottom cover is assembled nicely into the side panels, so that looks awesome as well. Then we have a vent here along the bottom cover of the laptop, as well as along the back panel of the laptop. No vents on the left or right side panels. Now looking at the ports, you can see we have a USB type A, two USB type C's, which one of those will be consumed for powering this laptop. It's probably one of the downsides I think about this laptop getting even more performance is a dedicated above 100 watt charger block. All right, moving over to the right side panel, we have a USB type A headphone jack and a manual cutoff switch for the webcam. So this thing is stocked with a decent selection of ports, but it's not my top tier selection. I would love to see a HDMI port and a full size SD card reader to make this an even better on the go creator laptop for both photographers and videographers. Now I know a lot of photographers use full size CF cards for bigger, more professional level cameras, but for the average prosumer, we're using SD cards. Now let's go ahead and do a quick open and close test. See if this thing can open and close with one hand. It's a little bit of a tight grab there once to get the hinge going. But once you get it going, it opens and closes easily with one hand. So really nice hinge. And then checking out the screen flex here, a light amount of screen flex, a really nice durable aluminum top cover, aluminum keyboard deck, aluminum bottom cover, aluminum side panel. So the build quality is excellent on this laptop. Now, when you look at the internal bits on the screen, you can see that we don't have a cheap plastic bezel. We have a screen that kind of extends that nice bezel around the screen. It's got a 16 by 10 aspect ratio, 3K display. Now this thing does have a 120 Hertz refresh rate. So because of that RTX 3050, you will be able to game on this laptop and have a really nice refresh rate. Now looking at the color accuracy and color gamut range of this laptop, it is good. I wouldn't necessarily call it great. It has 99% S RGB, 73% Adobe RGB, and 73% DCI-P3 with a brightness of 382 nits all at a Delta E of 1.47. So it's good, but it's not like the best that Lenovo has to offer. Actually, their Legion 5i Pro and Legion 7 Slim screens are a higher color gamut range and even a slightly lower Delta E while all being a little bit brighter than this laptop. Now I'm actually gonna do a full head-to-head -head review versus the Lenovo Legion Slim 7. So if you're curious about, should I get the Slim 7 from the Legion series or maybe you know the Slim Pro 7X, I'll film a full video about that. Now, if you're curious about the exact pricing and availability, of the Lenovo Slim 7 Pro X. I'll put links in the description below. If you do make a purchase, I will get a small commission, but at no extra cost to you. But of course, that's what keeps this channel alive and the helpful content coming your way. And right now, because we're heading clearly into 2023, a lot of these models are on sale. So you can snag one at a great deal. Now, while we're looking at the screen, there is a webcam on the top bezel. Here's a quick sample of the webcam so you can see what that looks and sounds like. This is the webcam on the Lenovo Slim 7 Pro X and a little sample of the audio for you as well. It seems like it really wants to be dark. I've got a light right in front of my face and when I try and brighten it up, it just, just pulls it dark. And when I turn the light off, it seems to try and you know counteract it and then it wants to darken it. But I don't know, it's just... It's a little sensitive and it leans kind of dark uh, and a little on more of the orange and yellow tones rather than more the natural lighter blue tones. So. And of course, the screen has a lot to do with the battery as well. So I run the battery life test at 20% screen brightness with the mode in the Lenovo Vantage Center set to battery saver. I go to battery saver in the Windows mode and I'll also turn the screen to 60 hertz in order to get even better battery life if possible. And you can see the battery life results coming up on the screen. We get almost nine hours of productivity 
over nine hours of streaming video playback, almost five hours of Photoshop battery life, and about two and a half hours of video editing battery life out of this laptop. So the battery life is good, but I wouldn't say it's as great as something like the Republic of Gamer Flow X13, which would be a really good competitor for this laptop. But I'm probably gonna wait until the latest model comes out because the trackpad comparison with this compared to the X13 is just not even the same. However, if you want me to review those head to head, the you know 2022 model versus the 2022 model, let me know and I'll I'll do that review for you because I'm just I'm just that I'm just that nice. All right, speaking of the trackpad, it does have a nice large trackpad, especially for a 14 inch laptop. It's got a great click and touch sensitivity. I just I really like this trackpad. It's very well built, it's very well designed and assembled to the laptop. The keyboard is great for simplicity's sake. It has a full size shift key. You have your full size arrow keys and the key press is a short to medium key press. So it's kind of your standard thin and light laptop keyboard feel. It is very plasticky keys. That's probably my one you know, complaint is the keys don't feel like the highest quality, but it's nothing that sounds or looks really cheap or feels cheap to the press. Just the material used for the keycaps just isn't my favorite. Here's a quick audio sample of me using both the keyboard and trackpad so you can hear what that sounds like. And in regards to the speakers, these are upward facing speakers on the laptop and here's a quick sample of the audio so you can hear what that sounds like. We are nearly at 100,000 subscribers. And when we get there, we'll be giving away three Lenovo Legion 5 Pros. So subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss out on the launch video of the giveaway so you can know how to enter when the time comes when we pass 100,000 subscribers. We're only 5,000 away. If everybody who watches this video subscribes, we will be there and I'm I'm stoked. So definitely subscribe. Now this laptop showed decent performance in the simulated benchmarks, but I'm so glad that life is not made up of simulated benchmarks. And as we took a turn into Photoshop, I was extremely impressed with this laptop. It scored a 928. And for a laptop around the $1,200 price point and giving us a 3K, display, 16 by 10 aspect ratio, really nice trackpad, great audio, great connectivity. I thought, man, this is a great designer, photo editor, and artist laptop. And and remember, it goes to 180. I thought it was I thought it was a two-in-one laptop for a second. <laughs> I was like, remember break. Yeah. No, this is not a two-in-one laptop. So when you think about uh, as far as like digital artist is concerned, it's good. Um it's not great because it's not touchscreen. It's not two in one. Um, that was a hilarious faux pas. I've been recently reviewing the book three and that's two in one with a touchscreen. And so I just, you know, I'm just kind of assuming all cool thin and light laptops are two in one. Anyway, let's move on. Okay, as far as After Effects is concerned though, this laptop is decent for After Effects. The reason I say decent is because 16 gigs of RAM is a great start for After Effects. Um, but if you don't have a dedicated GPU, it kind of wavers. However, because this has a dedicated GPU, I think it really makes a good contender for After Effects, especially for a thin and light on the go laptop. So if this, you know, if you can upgrade this in the Lenovo store to 32 gigs of RAM, this would be a fantastic purchase because it would give you that really nice ceiling for After Effects of RAM and it has the dedicated GPU. So I just checked the Lenovo store. You can actually upgrade this laptop to 32 gigs of RAM and it's actually on sale right now for $964. So it's a killer deal. I'll put links in the description below so you can check all that out. So if you can upgrade this laptop to 32 gigs of RAM, if your budget allows, then it would be a fantastic choice for After Effects. This will give you that RAM and the dedicated GPU. Now, as far as 3D modeling is concerned, it's good. It is in no way great. Um, it scored decent scores, I would say in Autodesk Maya, and Autodesk 3ds Max. However, PTC Creo and SolidWorks are kind of in the dumpster. It's just not what I would recommend to be like, yeah, go rock on SolidWorks and PTC Creo user. This is gonna be your 3D modeling dream. It's just not quite there with that 3050, four gigs of VRAM. I recommend for 3D modeling architects and uh, Blender users to get at least six gigs of VRAM in something like an RTX 3060 or you know the latest 40 series. 
Um, but that would be just my recommendation here. Now, as far as video editing is concerned, I was really impressed. In DaVinci Resolve, which is normally one that isn't you know, the best performer, a little bit slower export times, we saw a six minute and 48 second export time for 4K and a three minute and one second export time for 1080p. So that was very nice. Now, moving into Premiere Pro, a one minute export time for 1080p, two minutes and 57 seconds out of Premiere Pro 4K to 4K export. That's a nine minute clip, fantastic export time. That's almost on par with the Lenovo Legion 5i Pro, which has one of the best export times I've seen on my channel. Now, not only that, but like I mentioned earlier, I said this could be a decent 6K video editing laptop. I actually kind of lied because as I'm reviewing the results here, this thing actually performed very well. For 6K B-RAW, we saw a 19 minute and 25 second export time. That's better than the current Apple MacBook Pro M2 Pro chip. So absolutely slayed it for the B-RAW export time. And then for playback, for 6K B-RAW playback, full quality, 153 drop frames. That is on par with laptops that come with the RTX 3060 series GPU. So at $964, this is a banging sale. It's just insane. So definitely consider picking up this laptop if you're looking for a really good 4K and even light 6K B-RAW video editing laptop. Wow. I'm, I'm not trying to be dramatic and over pump this thing, but it's, it's really good. So punch for punch, you can ignore part of what I said at the beginning of the video because this thing will be great for 6K video editors, not 6K red footage, but 6K B-RAW, definitely 4K and 1080p, photographers and graphic designers. If you are a digital artist and wanna use this, I recommend you know getting like a Wacom tablet to connect with it because at about $964, that gives you a bit of a budget to go ahead and get maybe like a small Wacom tablet to use on your laptop or Wacom, depending on how you like to speak. So punch for punch, thin and light, great speakers, great trackpad, nice display, a little less than color accurate in my personal preferences, just if you're like obsessed with color accuracy, look towards something with a little bit higher Adobe or DCI-P3 color gamut range. Don't forget to subscribe for 100,000 subscribers and I will see you in the next video.